<laughs> Hi guys, how are you both? Nah, I like your taste in the music behind you, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Right. Luke, Cross, it was the, the first dance at my wedding and Al Green, I'm just a bit obsessed with. So they're yeah. all... Good taste. Yeah. Thank Great you. Great taste. Um, <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna start with you actually, uh, Rita, because I was gonna say, I mean, you this is you've nabbed my dream role. Because when I was about twelve years old, I was I was desperate to play the Artful Dodger on on, on stage at the West End, and I made my, I dragged my mum to an audition, and we queued up for about six hours. When I got to the front, I burst into tears, and I didn't even audition because I was too nervous. So I've always, but having said that, I'm really pleased to see this incarnation of the role because it's great to have a kind of female Artful Dodger here. I feel like this should and could happen more often with literary characters. Uh, obviously, like James Bond is another. Uh, do you think it's really important that we don't stick so strictly to the kind of original text and we are more creative in our stories and in our casting? Well, I think it's about nodding to the legend, Charles Dickens, in the beginning, you know, respecting the craft. And then really what's amazing about art and about literature and about books that even that I read just as a book fan, you know, you can really... Um, make your own interpretation of it even in your own mind if you just have one version of a story so to be able to do a film you know and modernize it and it, it being such a British cultural sort of heritage and again awful Dodger being a male and for me to to be fair I am a bit of a tomboy myself so to be able to come into this character and like really put my twist on it I think it just shows progression I guess in the day and age that we live in and I think I'm always going to champion that. I'm always going to be a voice for that. And the more I see it, the more I guess happier. And and I think accepting the world is going to be in all aspects of the world, you know, not just for movies, not just for music, but I think in life, in offices, in, in, in just general life. So I'm very, very happy that I was able to, you know, do this role and and do it to my fullest potential and 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 put my twist on it to be fair see what i did there see what yeah. I did. <laughs> nice <laughs> um yeah because i was going to ask uh, sophie i mean this is such an original adaptation did you kind of bother to use the original dickens characters to help craft your kind of character here or did you treat this purely as a sort of new creation um well i don't know i think a bit of both like it definitely is a new creation and particularly when i was looking at red she's based on Nancy but Nancy's story is so different in the original and because this version is such a, a more feminist gaze on it I was like all right I'm gonna take the sort of the confidence that Nancy had um, in the original film and in the original book and then kind of mix it with um, what we deem as confidence in in like London now and so created this character from there um but yeah, I mean, I love the film anyway. So I was like, this is just a great excuse to watch the film again. But um, yeah, I think it was a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. Sophie, did you have a, did you have a sort of a strong relationship with the, this story when you were growing up then? Because I was, I was obsessed with Oliver Twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't drag my mum to the auditions, but I was probably quite close. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, I, I always loved it. It was like, I had five VHSs and that would always watch and Oliver was one of them. Um, I love musical films and yeah, I just thought it was, it's such a brilliant story and I've always loved the book. So um, it, yeah, it was quite surreal doing the film, having grown up with that film. Yeah, Rita, because I mean, I think like this this movie paints such a kind of vibrant picture of London as well. I mean, it almost made me feel nostalgic because I kind of miss spending time in my city at the moment. It, do you think this movie feels a bit like a kind of love letter to the capital? I mean, even though it looks like it was shot in East and I think you're a fellow lab at Grover like me. So we both know West is best, but <laughs> <laughs> I had to drop that in. But yeah, do you think this felt like a real, yeah, it felt like a love letter to London in some ways, didn't it, this film? I think... I don't want to speak on behalf of Sophie too, but I feel like just shooting in London was so nice, you know, mm -hmm. and just being able to like not feel so far from your home, for example, or from like your loved ones. And I think Sophie can say more about this than me, but I guess when you do films and you have to go overseas and, you know, you, you feel really alone and secluded. And I think that really helped me feel more confident, you know, being in London. And then on top of that, having the ability to show sort of like the world and the streets of London from today, rather than whenever Charles did his, I think it was 1839 or something. And I feel like to be able to have the ability to be like this is us now and use our lingo and our language is always fun because you know um london is the best 
you know it really is it's like everything about it the food the culture the vibe the the, the streets it's like you know as you all know so it for me it was a privilege to be able to just like nod to something that is already so classic yeah because i mean obviously the sets were incredible as well and the costumes the whole kind of look of it was so important do you guys manage to kind of I was going to say steal anything from set. Maybe that's the one word. Were, did, were, were the production team uh, sort of like giving and, and letting you keep any of the, the items or any kind of mementos from your time? I don't think I took anything from the set, although I did want to. There were so many things. Um, I know Jody, one of our customers, really wanted the picture of Jesus. Like, was it Jesus or someone? I don't know. It was like a really gorgeous painting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in the room where we had all the things in there. Yeah, and it was in the Tate, and then it was also in Michael's office, like one they made. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean Charlie Jones, who's who styled the whole show, is incredible. Like how we would come out of fittings and be like, "You will not guess what I'm wearing." Like cowboy boots and like re you had some like crazy leather sort I of like. Clothes. I was taking it all. I was always asking, "Can I have this? Can I?" Have this? <laughs> I was like, the coat was so nice. All the cos costumes for me were like right up my street, just super fun. And Red, Sophie's character was super fun. Like all of her outfits, I thought they were so cool. And so I was always like, is this, can I buy this? Is this <laughs> and the costume designer was like, no, instead of, in case we have to do reshoots, can you put it back? I was like, okay, sorry. Suitcase <laughs> in hand, running away every time. <laughs> Uh, um, well, Sophie, I was going to ask you first, but obviously you've worked with some some big names now, but how is it working alongside like Michael Caine? I mean, I, obviously there's there are some people that are, you look at their face and they're sort of so ingrained into our kind of like memories and our kind of lives that is it almost weird? Because I've interviewed him once. I remember sitting near him and I kept thinking that guy looks and sounds just like Michael Caine, sort of forgetting it actually was Michael Caine. Was it quite surreal to be sharing so many scenes with him? Yeah, I totally know what you mean. I think I had the same reaction. Um yeah, it was surreal, um, but he's just such a nice guy. Like we, we all had such a good time and he is so relaxed and he was so welcoming. And, you know, there is this family dynamic to the film of Fagan and his kids. And I think we kind of had that off screen as well. He definitely like took us under his wing and he had some really good stories, but yeah, it was, you know, sometimes you'd be like, oh, there's, Michael Caine having, you know, like a cheese sandwich or I don't know, like a <laughs> quaver. I think it's just like, bizarre. Love I'm just picturing bizarre. Michael Caine eating quavers now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Rita, I mean, obviously, you know, sort of you're, to, to many kind of people around the world, you're known primarily for your sort of singing and your musical career. But I was wondering, you've obviously you've been starring in quite a few productions now. Do you, what, do you have a kind of game plan in mind, a kind of five year plan thinking about how you want to balance the two different sides to your kind of art? Or do you just take each project as it comes and see where it takes you? That's a great question. You know, I always have sort of like a dream goal that I always set myself. I just think it's always nice to like manifest anyway in life. So I've always made a sort of like goal plan, but I never really expect it to always go that way. You know, um, I love, love, love being able to um, adapt into movies and slowly make a transition but I always of course I can't live without music and I can't breathe without being able to make my music so I think it's just a good balance you know my plan is to really explore as much as I can and take it project per project and if there's something really in interesting and amazing for me script wise you know I'm, I'll definitely take it and, and challenge myself um, so yeah there's a huge plan to just do both really as well as I can. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time today, guys. And Rita, also, thank you for like the mask singer at the moment. That is honestly ah! keeping, keeping me sane in these dark days. I'm just obsessed. Me too. You know, it's nice to watch it back after filming it a while ago and being like, oh, I still don't know who that is. But it's really nice because um, I feel like it's nice for people to have something to watch. So thank you for watching it. I'm in like five different mask singer WhatsApp groups just guessing every week. It's great. Amazing. <laughs> I wonder who you think they are, but I know you haven't got time, but I'll be curious to see. Yeah, anyway, well, thank you so much, guys. Much appreciated. And best of luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.